Welcome back, you incredibly awesome people. Thank you so much for tuning in for what has been a brilliant start. You're, you're included in there. Thank you You're so one much. of those incredibly awesome. Yeah, you are awesome. Now, hopefully you guys are feeling awesome this morning. We're going to empower you even more right now. In an ideal world, okay, we would all have fantastic managers, bosses who help us succeed, uh, make us feel valued like we try to do every morning, um, and just all-round great people. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. And whatever the reason you have to uh, kind of inform a tense relationship with your superior, you still have to make the best of the situation and ultimately get the job done. Exactly. So today we are asking, are you dealing with tense relations with your superior? Now this morning we're joined by psychologist and CEO of emotional intelligence development platform Migro, oh, Mark Baker, to help us discuss this hot topic and we would love to hear your questions and comments as well. So you can call us at 21 triple five two that number again oh two one 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 zero five 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 two or you can comment on our facebook page and we will engage with you live it's an opportunity to plug into one of the best brains in the business mark um <laughs> welcome to it um buddy let, let's be first quite overt we're not judging our bosses we're not judging our workers here this is judging the relationship a very complex relationship yeah. between the two but i think first we have to understand the position of a boss and everyone has a story to tell about their boss. We, we are all subject to that relationship. And often to get the job done means tension. Some even have a conflict model um, resulting in why is a boss so visible and um, why do they stand out to the degree that they do, first of all, in the, in the workplace, do you think? Well, I think I, I loved what you were saying about how it's, it's this relationship you know, essentially you, you get thrown in with this dominant person that you spend more time with than your husband or your wife. You haven't chosen to be with them and yet you're spending whatever it is, 40 hours a week with this person that's like large and in charge. Um, and you haven't chosen to be there. So, you know, if, if marriage or, or family relationships are difficult, how much more yeah. workplace scenarios when there's a forced hierarchy, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, your, your question about why they are so prominent, I think that's the role of a manager or a leader. They, they are be. there yeah. to be responsible for getting the job done. Essentially, the nature of, I think, leadership or management is to influence. Yeah. And so there needs to be kind of a, a, a dominant role. So, so there's a structure there. There's a forced relationship dynamic that I think makes it quite challenging from the outset. Yeah. Do you think that someone in leadership is more vulnerable to uh, criticism from subordinates or even dislike? Yeah, I think, uh, what's that saying? The tallest trees catch Catches the most the wind. wind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, yeah, ultimately, um, there's a slight problem with some of the younger generations, I think, coming into the workplace in that there is a, a sense in which we, we hear or, or we hear on the world for the world to make our lives awesome. Yeah. And actually, ultimately, there is a job to be done. You mentioned that in the intro. Yeah. And that manager or that, that leader or whoever it is, is that is responsible for a department or the outcomes of something is actually responsible for that. Their responsibility is your work in, yeah. in a sense, yeah. you know. Wow. So, so that creates, I think, quite a, quite a tussle and quite a struggle because uh, some people are trying to get as little done and get paid as much yeah. for as little done as possible. Yeah. And, and, you know, the manager is trying to get as much achieved as possible through, uh, through the people they're working with. This is a spectrum. They're a spectrum of relationship, a spectrum of ability, a spectrum of responsibility, all within this. And we've got to somehow find a personal connection so that we can get the best out of each other. I think we often forget it's a two-way street. So as much as your boss can empower you, you can also empower your, your boss or your manager. If things have broken down, what is the best way to approach the situation, to escalate it, to get a favorable outcome? Is it a, do I speak to my, my manager directly? Do I go to human resources? How do I approach dealing with one of those difficult situations? I want to make a joke and say you should be as mean as possible to everyone. No, no, no. I think, I think it boils down essentially to um, a, a set of skills called emotional intelligence. Yeah. That, you know, you're saying it's a two-way street. That, that set of skills, they're almost like psychological muscles, if you like, that a manager is going to have to a certain or less degree and an employee is going to have to a certain or less degree. And, and those muscles are going to impact on the way that that relationship plays out. So, you know, the, the typical solution is things are bad, go and talk to HR. Yeah. And that's all, that's all good and well, but there's really only certain scenarios where you probably want to go and have a conversation with HR, and that's when they are really bad or really on the extremes. Yes. Yeah. 
But in those delicate moments that are really the most awkward and the, and the most frustrating over time, it's emotional intelligence that helps two people to navigate that, both for the, the leader and the, the, the subordinate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very tricky, tricky waters. Certainly um. is. Well, we're, if you are dealing with some tense relations with your superior, we would love to hear your questions or even your comment for a psychologist, Mark Baker. So you can call us on 021 110 or even just post a comment on our Facebook page and we will engage with you after this. It's my feel good worth this show. <laughs> Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Express All right here on SABC3. Well, it's Monday and we are talking relationships. And today, psychologist and CEO of emotional t intelligence development platform, Migro, Mark Baker, is in the hot seat to help us discuss how you can improve tense relations with your manager or boss at work. And we would love to hear your questions or even Jeez, your comments for call. psychologist Mark Baker. So call us on 21 110 or send us a comment to our Facebook page and we will engage with you we have a caller on the line yeah Hewitt. a very good hey, morning Hewitt. Hewitt. um thanks so much for weighing in mark is standing by to answer your question or maybe you just got a comment but weigh in my friend what have you got to say for yourself uh good morning good morning um, excellent uh, topic that you guys have this morning i mean we all are working um and it's always um it's not always nice having a manager that is not informed, I think a lot of companies are failing us as employees, um, putting people in management roles that are not properly trained to be in those leadership positions. So that's why I think um, the current generation that's coming up, the younger ones, are having difficulties with these managers because we, we look at them as authority figures without um, the knowledge to 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 the know how of 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 how to to control these people. Um, are you dealing with a a situation like that yourself, or or maybe I can ask you what advice do you have for someone who is dealing with a situation like that? Yes, yes, Graham. Um, I'm currently dealing with a situation like that, and I previously in a previous workplace also dealt with a situation like that. So it's. It's a very common thing that these managers are not trained. Um, in fact, I, I once asked um, senior management that they, um, the, the thing, that they train these people, send them on leadership courses, because um, there's a lot of dynamics that go into being a manager. Sure. Yeah. And, Brilliant. and they're lacking that. Um, thank, thank you, you so US. much, man. Um, thank you so much for weighing in. Raised a couple of really pertinent yeah. um, questions mm -hmm. there. And uh, you always know in studio when everyone's nodding because yeah. we kind of kind of feel that. But this is the reality that there are going to be a lot of managers that might be younger. Um, I mean, this is a can of worms that we can we can possibly open with yeah. this. But um, what is your take? How would how would you? Yeah, I think I mean this is a, this is a problem that we see so much in different uh, companies. Is that uh, people often the the first person to get promoted into a managerial role is the one that stands out technically, mm -hmm. um, oh, and so they have this technical ability. Uh, yes. They get promoted into a managerial They've role from CD, within their, their the peers. If you imagine skills, you're all yeah. peers, you've all been around the you know the water cooler together. Now suddenly this person gets promoted, it's a higher salary, it's different responsibility, it's essentially the reporting lines change. And the person, quite, quite rightly, as the caller said, doesn't, doesn't have the leadership competence or managerial uh, history or skill to navigate that. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a huge problem in organizations. So what do you do to then help that person grow into that role? Because the reality is yeah. they are your boss. They are going to be managing you. So yeah. what do you do to empower them? Do you go to the structures above and bang your, your fist against a wall, or how do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a complex question. The, the simple answer is training and development. You know, I mean, in the BE scorecard in South Africa, the whole point of transformation and growing South Africa as a company in terms of our human resource is training and development. Yeah. So I think that's the main thing, is, is train your leaders, specifically in the, in the, the, the arena of emotional intelligence. Yeah. Grow it them is, into the role, yeah. It, it is the dominant uh, part of leadership. 
Um, but then, you know, there's, there's cultural aspects. You were mentioning that in the break, you know, that um, just, just developing the culture of the organization helps people to be a little bit uh, softer towards each other, a little bit more pliable in the way they interact with each other, yeah. more understanding of, of that humans are just humans. You know, this is, sure, this is the boss or the manager, yeah. but this is just another human trying to do their best. Talking about humans being humans, let's say you are dealing with a, a, a difficult boss or there's tense relations between you, the subordinate, and your leader. Um, most times we gravitate to venting to our colleagues. Mm -hmm. What yeah. are the pros and yeah. what are the cons? Is this something that you should do? Because oftentimes we do vent What's in venting a and what's undermining? Way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, can I just start with the cons? Yes, I mean, please. You said pros and cons. <laughs> I, I just, I, I, the hairs on the back of my head start standing up because yeah. if, if I come to you and start saying about Graham, you know, Graham, I can't believe he was doing this. And, yes. you know, even if it's obvious to you, it leaves you with a sense of, is Mark saying this about me ah, to yes. someone else? Yes, if you can yes. say and it so to me, you can say you're it about me. Yeah, you're yeah. a snitch, yeah. man. Subconsciously, there's this kind of uh, gossipful, malicious, uh, uh, breaking down of others' tone that starts coming in. Yeah. And unfortunately, for the person doing it or sharing it, it just actually starts breaking down people's views of them yeah. and ultimately starts excluding you, them. Yeah. So on the surface, it looks like I'm part of yeah. the, the inner We're circle that together, all hates yeah. the boss. But ultimately, it just starts, uh, you know, eroding trust. Yes. Um, so th there's definitely negatives about that. I would say on the positive side, you probably do want to get another perspective uh, from someone. Mm. You know, I, I, I would find it quite helpful to chat to people in your personal life, try and give them an objective uh, view of, of what's happening. Mm. So often, uh, it's, it's poor performance that leads to a struggle or a tussle between a boss and a manager. Yeah. And it's, it's difficult to say that, because what I'm saying is that yeah. we, we need to up our game. Yes. Yeah. Be awesome, and you're probably not going to have the same kind of uh, uh, tussle with Issues. your, your yeah. manager. Because all they're trying to do is achieve their KPIs. Yeah. They're trying to achieve what, yeah. what their mandate is. And I suppose, ultimately, this might be a bit of pill to swallow. If you're kind of feeling like there is someone else is the reason that you're underperforming, you might be passing the buck. There yeah. is always something that you can do yeah, if, you're, sure. if you're strong and confident within your own performance yeah. that gives yeah. you, in any scenario or situation, yes. literally a leg to stand up. Mark, yeah. that's, that's been great. I feel more emotionally secure <laughs> and intelligent <laughs> right now. Um, but thank you so much for, for everyone who weighed in. I know it's, uh, it can be a very difficult thing to broach. One of the most complex dynamics, I think, in certain scenarios. Um, we ne may not get to choose our boss, um, but we do get to choose how we react to those tough situations in life, whether it's work or outside of work, and being dealt a hand that includes a difficult boss is not fun. We can relate to you, certainly, um, but with the right mindset, the right approach, the right emotional intelligence, you can make it work until you're able to move on to either a better environment or help evolve your own environment to make it better for you and your boss, and that's ultimately what it's all about.